Joy Trathaway with the OpenStack Foundation and the Newton Design Series. And we're welcoming Lana Brindley back for another cycle as PTL of the Docs Project. Lana, would you tell us a little bit about yourself? Sure. Uh, I'm Lana. I'm the documentation PTL for Newton. I work for Rackspace. I'm leading a team of technical writers here in Australia. I've been working on OpenStack documentation since Icehouse, and I've been the PTL since Liberty. But I've been an open source technical writer for about a decade now. Great. And tell us more about the Docs Project. So the Docs Project cuts across all of OpenStack. We're a horizontal project. We provide end user documentation on the docs.openstack.org site. And we know now that two thirds of OpenStack users refer to docs at least weekly with about one fifth of users looking at the site daily. So it's a really big audience. Yeah, it's fantastic numbers that we saw from docs in the, docs use in the user survey. Um, sure. Tell us about what those hot topics were um, in Austin as your team were discussing um, what issues to solve. Sure. So the, we had two main hot topics. Uh, the first one was about increasing our support for teams who want to include information about their products in the official docs. Uh, it's been a big conversation for, for some time now through the last cycle. That Big Tent has really changed the way we look at projects and we want to ensure we're supporting each product team in the best way. Um, the second topic was really more about processes and governance. We've made some strides ahead in this area during the previous cycles. So now it's about bedding those processes down and ensuring everyone understands how we're working. Thank you. So what are some of the user needs? Um, you're starting to talk a little bit about those with hot topics. Um, what is your team thinking about the, the user needs? So the main one was uh, really came down to the installation guide. Uh, because of the way the big tent changes have affected things and it's changed the way um, projects go about joining the OpenStack ecosystem. So foundation obviously have an increased focus on ensuring new projects have sufficient documentation, which is great. But that meant that we needed to change our approach to documenting the installation of an OpenStack cloud. There's no right way to install a cloud and there's certainly no right set of components you should be installing when you do it. But we have a small documentation team, we have a seemingly endless parade of new components that require documentation. So we were actually faced with a really big technical challenge and everyone had some kind of skin in the game. So that was kind of tough for us. Um, the, the second problem we wanted to solve was about providing some more guidance to developers and other OpenStack contributors, especially with these big tent changes, um, talking about how the docs team works and to make the inner workings of the docs team a, a little less inscrutable than they were before. Well, we appreciate it. And um, what can we look forward to in Newton in terms of uh, new features or enhancements in docs? Uh, so I've got, top, I've, got, I've got three top priorities. First of all, uh, we're going to create the infrastructure to allow projects to write their own installation docs in their repo and then publish them seamlessly to the docs.openstack.org front page. So this means that projects have responsibility for their own docs, but the docs team will provide assistance in the form of templates and infrastructure support. And that means that we're ensuring that all projects are treated as first class citizens within the, within the ecosystem. Secondly, the existing installation guide as it is will change focus. It's going to be more about an installation tutorial, giving people a highly opinionated and completely manual installation method to learn the ropes, but it's not for installing a production cloud. So thanks to the OpenStack user survey, we can safely say that most production clouds are installed using some kind of automated tool. So having manual installation instructions is useful as a training tool, but it's not really for a real world scenario. So the third thing we have is a really a fairly long laundry list of, of other things that needed to be done. It all ended up focusing mostly on streamlining some of our processes, being clearer about the way we operate, consolidating guides that had for obscure historical reasons been in their own repos and bringing those back into our main repo and just general editing and tidying up of course, which happens every cycle. Well, those sound like very ambitious but important goals. <laughs> Very ambitious. I have one last question for you, which um, I know can be a, a bit of a conundrum, conundrum for documentation, which <laughs> is that we try to connect the dots um, on the product work group um, between the different projects by emphasizing um, five themes, which are scalability, resiliency, manageability, modularity, and interoperability. And so um, tell us from your perspective, what is documentation particularly trying to solve for? 
So last time we did this interview, um, I mentioned that Docs had a focus on manageability. So that was for the Mataka release. And we were aiming at working more effectively and efficiency, efficiently sorry, with a focus on collaboration. So for Newton, while manageability themes are still really present, uh, the focus is actually more on scalability. And we're making our documentation efforts scale out to represent a much greater proportion of products, contributors, operators, and users. From empowering projects to write their own documentation with our support uh, to making processes simpler to find and understand to ensuring our documentation is accurate, up to date and effective. It's going to be actually a really exciting cycle, I think. Well, thank you so much for all of the con contributions that you and the full documentation team provide to getting Newton ready to rock and roll. Um, great talking to you and uh, we'll see you in Barcelona. Lovely. Thank you so much, Heidi.